Hello, this is episode 3 of Kerbal Space Endeavor and we are continuing launching our second satellite into space. This time with a lot more fuel on board and therefore we should reach our targeted orbit in just one go. But things don't always go to plan, so here let's switch to old me. There we go. <gasps> no, 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 no. Dun, 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 dun. Quick. Quick, 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 quick. I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. We need to set target, mission control, force open, or let's targeted at SATCOM1, just in case. And we're gonna set this to mission control, force open, just in case. So to explain for people who haven't used remote tech, if you haven't set up your satellite to be connected to anything, your craft will have no connection and you will have no control over it. That's why it was necessary for me to go out onto an EVA, turn on two satellites to be connected to something, otherwise I would have had no control over this craft whatsoever. And here we're just fast forwarding our acceleration to get to our optimal height that we need to get to if we want a geostationary orbit. Um, yeah. And now this we're just gonna rename the satellite really quick so we do know Satcom exactly which satellite two. this is and this will be Ad. SATCOM 2. No, we don't and need to put in um, because we already no, know that so SATCOM 2 should be fine. Let's just Let's just leave it at SATCOM 2 and that should be fine. And once we reached Apoaps, it was time for our second burn. So we get our periaps high enough. But what I did realize is I was at the very perfect position to get the satellite in... Uh, well, the satellite wasn't in the right position, it was just not uh, going at the right speed. So what I had to do was I had to check that the craft which brought the satellite up to um up into space is now descending back to its Kerbin and I need to take control of it otherwise our good pilot will die and we do not want Jebediah Kerman to die because he's our man he's the best he's the awesome and once again I start losing lots and lots of pieces while I descend back towards the planet Kerbin as I said, I'm using deadly reentry and deadly reentry fucks things up. And stand, 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 stand. No, 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 no. Whew. Okay, we only lost one engine. So yeah, here you heard me freak out as it was happening in the past. Um. There's better ways to get back to the planet Kerbin. As I said in my previous episodes, there are heat shields that would make me enter the orbit a lot more stable and therefore I wouldn't lose as many parts. The problem is though, I will have a hard time then trying to save as many of the more important parts like engines and fuel tanks to get the most money back. But that's just how the way I deal it. There's probably a better way. Maybe later on I get better technology to do this, but we'll see. And all of the maneuvering you see here, I'm trying to align that I have three geostationary um, satellites in orbit. So I need to build up a triangle around the planet Kerbal, Kerbin, Kerbal, <laughs> to get uh, satellite coverage all over the Kerbin system. So wherever a craft is or launches from, there will always be a satellite in sight to have a connection to, no matter the height, speed or whatever. The important part is to get your craft to have an orbital period of 5 hours, 59 minutes and 9.4 seconds as it uh, is uh, the, the orbital time that Kerbal spins. 
So one entire rotation of the planet from night to day, so one entire day is 5 hours, 59 minutes and 9.4 seconds. And once you reach exactly that at about 2863.3 kilometers, you are in geostationary orbit, so you can just fast forward and it'll work out. And here comes the third satellite that is necessary for this. All of course we're fast forwarding this because otherwise it'll take forever. Most of the episodes that I do I play for around for about two hours. So I have two hours of materials that I cut down and I want to get episodes to be about 20 minutes long. That's why there is so much time acceleration and it is needed otherwise this will take forever and you guys will be bored. Um, yes the last satellite goes right up to the perfect height and then it is once again just a matter of accelerating at the right speed and I cut it really close with the fuel as you can watch right here I get to the uh, height that I want to and I have not that much reserve left so this will be our SATCOM 3 and we are not in the perfect position yet. That is something that we fix later. But first of all, we switch to all of the other SATCOMs and now finally align all of the satellites to each other. So when you, you use remote tech and you set up one over Kerbin Space Center, you need a connection towards mission control. And then you need to set the other two satellites to SATCOM 1, uh, to SATCOM 2 and SATCOM 3. And then you need to jump to SATCOM 2 and SATCOM 3 and tell them to direct two of their antennas back to SATCOM 1. So there's always a two-linked connection. Because if you only have SATCOM 2 uh, direct back at SATCOM 1 and SATCOM 1 only has one satellite running as at active vessel, only if you switch then to the SATCOM 2 then your craft would work. And if you understood this, you're awesome. If this was too complicated, look up the tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do pretty much the same as I did just now, you should probably get your own satellite network up and going. And here we have, once again, this falsely designed craft going back towards Kerbin. The thing is, because this was in such a high orbit and I didn't put on any photovoltaics or any kind of batteries, we are actually running low on electricity and therefore I had a really really hard time steering this. But the interesting part is it was still steerable with the winglets that were on because somehow they don't need electricity to work. But we got, once again, Jebediah back home safe and sound, even though things broke off. And then we looked back into the contract system after launching all three satellites and having them in their position. And we realized there was a Kerbin to save! So we launched another Rescuer 1 up into space and I actually got fairly, fairly close, as you just saw, to the Kerbin just by going up into space just directly from the liftoff and as we get closer we just use normal maneuvering as you've seen before this is just easy cake easy stuff nothing special and get this new crew member right on board so here we have Kendrin Kerman on board and you will see once again we have a little bit of a flip out but this thing is a lot more stable and a lot more better but we took a look at some other contracts and I want to show you guys how weird some of these contracts can be and how easy it is to obtain them. Okay. Uh, yeah, we already know that. So let's see what happens when all of this is launched at the same time. Oh, would you look at that? Contracts are all of them complete. <laughs> some of their quests, I mean, yes, right now they are just put in some contracts and they probably did it for beginner 
players or something like that. But still, I mean, why make it really so easy? I really don't get that. So after some ridiculous testing, we go into some more serious testing. We have our first airplane, which I called the honeybee for some reason, because it was suggested from one of my viewers. And uh, yeah, it's just we need to get to a certain height at a certain speed, and then there we go. We just activate it, and then we were hoping this thing flies. The reason why I did such a weird takeoff is that I haven't unlocked any proper wheels yet. So I had to do a very interesting, just straight up lift off. And here you see me very carefully trying to steer this and fly this around because I have Ferrum airspace installed and Ferrum likes to, let's just say it as it is, uh, screw things up. And because we don't have wheels, I needed to use parachutes to land, but it got us down safely. And here is our last project. This is another satellite, so the fourth satellite we're launching. But this satellite is a little bit more different than the others. It has a very specific use that I will show you guys in just a minute. And something broke off there. What? Um, what broke off here? Oh, it was the small connecting um, satellite dishes. No, not satellite. Oh dishes. man, like satellite antenna. That's the word. Antenna that broke off there. Even though it sh shouldn't have, because it was in the cover of the fairing. But whatever. This is actually the first mission we're launching with a craft that has that is unmanned. Because now that the satellite network is properly working, we can actually do that. So we can be anywhere around Kerbin and we will have satellite coverage. So we did need to finish our satellite network before we get up there. And um, this time we're not going 90 degrees to the right. We're actually trying to get a polar orbit. So we go exactly over the North Pole and we go exactly over the South Pole. I mean, uh, the word exactly is not to be taken completely literally because it is very hard to get it completely exact. But if you just get it semi right or at least almost there, it should be fine. And here we have the fairings flying away and our launch system flying away. And here we have this special satellite. Now we need to connect it to at least two satellites to have coverage. And we still have lots and lots of fuel on board, which is very good. And I did intend to leave this drive stage behind and just drop it back to its carbon. The problem is though, I don't have any um, connection with it anymore because during the launch as you saw earlier um, the antennas broke off so now we just rise up to 250 kilometers because we have scanset installed scanset is a mod that lets you scan planets and make um, maps of them so you don't have to use the map view anymore and kind of have an estimate where you're going to be as you will see in just a minute, you will get a really nice map that shows you where your, how your uh, craft is flying, where it is the periaps, where is the apoaps, and where its future orbit is going to take you. This is really, really useful. And as I said, this is one of the challenges that I set myself to is that I want to explore planets before I take any manned missions to it. So even unmanned missions. So before, we're just going to do it this way. First launch satellites there, so we have coverage. Then we're going to put uh, one of these satellites in orbit that takes uh, makes a map for us. 
Then we can decide on the landing site where we're going to put down our first probe that's going to drive around and check out a few things for us. And once of these, all these, these conditions are met, then we're going to decide on a landing site for a manned mission. I do all of this because I like the challenge. I think it is challenging, or at least it's challenging for me. I know there's a lot of people who are a lot better than me in this game. They can calculate all of this stuff properly. And yeah, here you see the finally the scan set opening. And here we go. We are starting to take pictures of the moon. And just a little bit more. The thing is about Scanset is it there we have the big picture. There you can see the yellow dotted line will indicate my current orbit and the blue line is the orbit that will follow afterwards. So as you can see we're right there here yeah and once we go down and then up again or do I Am I reading this right? I don't remember. Was it the one thing up and down? So even with right click you can kind of zoom in and take like a proper view of something. And there's a lot of settings you can go to. It can detect slopes for you so that helps you decide if you really want to land there or not. Because you never want to land on slopes. And it uh, later on, if you get the higher tech uh, scanners, it gives you high resolution um, vi uh, pictures. So right now I only have black and white, and it's in low resolution. But later on, I get high resolution, and I get color, and then I get things that determine where does a biome start, where does a biome end, which is really useful because if you don't want to look and switch out of the game every time, you want to look up, okay, where's this biome, where's that biome. You can just uh, do it in game. This is a really cool mod. I just recently found out about it. It is. Uh, I'm just gonna post it again in the description because um, advertising it is probably a good idea because I really really like it. And the thing is though, the satellite coverage does not update unless you are in control of the vessel or the controlling vessel that you have at the moment has Scanset activated. And here you see me, I changed the view. There's three different views where I have like the normal map as we all had it in school before. Or you have here the more, I don't even know what it's called. It says there at the bottom uh, screen, you guys can read it and try and pronounce it because I think it's Russian. And here you see we've already uncovered it. And you now see why it is important that we have a polar orbit. So then we can have a coverage of the entire planet without having to change our orbit. So yeah, this pretty much concludes our episode. We got a lot of cool stuff. We have our first surveyor in orbit. This is the surveyor one. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And stay tuned for more episodes. If you have any wishes, recommendations, or anything, just post in the comments. I surely need it. I only recently started streaming, and I definitely need some, some good advice by getting better at it. Until next time. My name's Antilles.